In the previous episode, we showed how Torben was misrepresented on Danish national TV. And children who pee their pants from anxiety, you have to be very, very frightened. We gave you proof that clips were used out of context. He was pulling his clothes off uh, because he wanted to go swimming. They did that to bring a false story that children get traumatized at Torben's ministry. It is a form of psychological abuse to watch adults subjected to this. Even in the Danish parliament, this wrong information was repeated, and these statements were incorporated in the comments around a new law on psychological abuse. Many of you have probably followed the documentary, God's Best Children, and seen how a preacher commits demonic exorcisms in front of shaking and crying children. We agree with children's condition that this kind of behavior can be described as psychological abuse. Torben Sondergaard, a pastor from Denmark, is being detained in Florida without any formal charges. With this video series, we want to make you aware of his case, and we will show you evidence that there is a fight going on a fight over the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is an incredible story where things are not always what they seem. When going through the episodes of this TV program and seeing how much Torben and his ministry was misrepresented, we can only conclude one thing. God's best children was a smear campaign. How was it for people working in Torben's ministry when these programs were on TV? We lived at the, at the Jesus Center at the time. We lived there for nine months, so we really um, got to know Torben and the heart behind it. Um, and he was just sincere. That documentary was really to, to make a negative story about him, to put him down, basically. The documentary gave a completely distorted image of Torben and his ministry. And the result was, people all over Denmark became angry with Torben. After the documentary, we saw people coming in with cars. They were driving up, uh, up the property. Um, looking and going around and it gave with some people really fear. What we needed to do um, was put locks on the property because often we were in the night not even locking the place. One day there were people who were throwing stones at the windows. In the documentary, the topic of psychological abuse was not the only thing they focused on. They also tried to make it look as if Torben was doing quackery, which means Fraudulent medical practice by persons without medical training or license. First, they told the story of a pastor that was convicted in the past. Next, they show a conversation that Torben had with the lady who visited his event. Torben did not know the lady was a journalist. She was sent by the production company to make secret recordings. We see them talk about her medication. Torben never tells people what to do with their medication because he knows this is not his area of expertise. But since the journalist brought up the subject matter of what medicine she is taking, Torben entered a discussion on this topic, and fragments of this conversation were used out of context to make it look as if Torben is breaking the law. We need to have the courage to look at this, to talk about this, and relate to this politically. It's relevant to note that TV2 the network that broadcasted God's Best Children is owned by the Danish government. In the news bulletin of TV2, the clips of the undercover journalist were shown to members of the Danish parliament. We have asked a number of health commissioners to watch TV2's hidden recording of Torben Sondergaard. It's simply quackery. It is deeply, deeply worrying. We're showing this to you to make it clear what the intentions of the producers were. Not to tell the truth, but to take Torben and his ministry down. Later, we will go deeper into their motives, but in this episode, we want to focus on something else. We noticed that many rumors are being spread around Torben when it comes to finances. 
We see that here, for example, in a comment below our first episode. Here in Denmark, some believers are bashing Torben, saying that he's stolen a lot of money from TLR, living a life in luxury. I don't believe it, though. We found out that the production company also tried hard to bring this story, that Torben is not clean when it comes to finances. We showed you before the clips that were taken by an undercover journalist. She has been sent by the production company. We decided to send a mole into Torben's movement. The truth is, there was not one mole. There were actually two moles. We were in uh, Denmark for two months, uh, several years ago, and uh, these two people showed up, uh, a tall young man and a, and a young woman, they, and they were from Denmark. Here, you see both of them being given their testimony. Just with your own words, how have it been? It's been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, it's been life-changing in, in, in a lot of different areas, but the most important one is I, I feel closer to God and I, I feel like I have Jesus near me now after I've been drifting away for quite some time. Yeah. What about you? It's been incredible and I just feel light and yeah. free, I think. Um, both journalists let themselves be baptized and prayed over. I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. I will cry. I, will cry. I repent for my sins and I'm ready to follow Jesus. By doing so, they demonstrate they don't have any fear of God. But not only that, it also shows no respect for Christian traditions. When we showed these clips to various people in Denmark, they got really upset. Why did our government allow this to happen? Why are they trampling on our faith in Jesus Christ? Why was it even necessary to send in undercover journalists? If Torben and his ministry was a closed group, where the government had no idea what was going on, this could maybe justify such an action as a way of infiltrating in a closed community. But this is not the case. Torben's ministry is completely open for anyone to visit. The events are free and published on the internet with an open invitation. Everything that goes on in Torben's life and ministry is openly shared on social media. On top of that, the production company that sent these journalists already had full access to Torben's life and work for a whole year. They were given permission by Torben to interview anyone they wanted for their program. The only reason we can think of is they could not tell the story they wanted to tell. Amelie made the undercover videos that you saw before. But what was the mission of Sebastian? Sebastian told Torben that he had inherited a large sum of money and that he wanted to give that to Torben. Torben responded with, well, you can go to the website of our ministry and make a donation there. But Sebastian said, I want you to have it, not your ministry. Torben refused to take it, and this repeated several times. So his goal was to get Torben to accept this money and secretly film this so they could use these videos to create another false story that Torben is more focused on his own financial gain than doing God's work. Already before, when the camera crew was following Torben, it was noticed that they were trying to create a story around money. None of these clips made it in the program. It's the same false story that is being shared now in many videos on social media. Why is that? Anyone we could find who had been involved with the finances of Torben and his ministry was immediately willing to share a video testimony with us. So my name is Brad and this is my wife Katie. Hi. Uh, we were helpers at the uh, TLR Luke 10 school. Hi, my name is Star Leger and I'm a disciple of Jesus. My name is Ben Claudi and I have known uh, Torben Sønergaard since 2012. Hi, my name is Ruben Ibarra. I've been working with Torben as part of the leadership and as part of the teaching staff. Hi, my name is Jenny. So I met Torben in June of 2020 when my husband and I went to the Luke 10 school at the Ark in North Carolina. And we got to know him that summer and he asked us to travel with them doing the tent revivals. And I was doing administrative work and my husband was in charge of security. 
Uh, we got to know him and his family very well, and we continued on, uh, on and off helping with schools and then coming on with the ministry full time uh, the spring of 2021. I was um, helping at the time in the finances and in the office with TLR. And as a former banker, I was taking care of his accounts and his economy. And uh, during that time, we got to spend a lot of personal time with Torben mm -hmm. and uh, work directly with him in the office and in finances. We got to know Torben very well. And we see he's definitely a man of God and he has a love for Jesus that comes above everything else. He loves his family and all he wants to do in this life is to see everyone come to Jesus. There was a lot of transparency and there was a lot of um, accountability. And everything was was very, very clean, very clean. I have never experienced anything where I could, as from my experience as a banker, see anything which was not clean in what we were doing. It was never for him about like the means. It was or the finance, like it was just never about that. It was always about the mission and his mission is just furthering the gospel and um, just to pursue God and what he feels like the Lord has put on his heart. One of the big things that I wanna communicate is the faith that I witnessed in Torben. Um, and that faith resulted in that when, when we had events that he didn't do a long I don't even remember him asking at all about money. We would pass the bucket and people would give because the Holy Spirit would put it on their hearts. But not out of compulsion because Torben really believes that God provides. And we had the privilege of while being part of this ministry, witnessing God come through over and over again because of faith. One thing that I really admire about Torben is his integrity. If there is one word that I could use to describe him is his, his integrity. Um, I've seen him love his family, love his friends, love others around him. And um, basically I've seen him um, just in a few words exemplify and live out the commandment of Jesus of loving the Lord God with everything we are and loving others um, as well. And um, we also um, observed a lot of generosity from Torben in doing life with him. If there was needs amongst the helpers or the students, um, he was always wanting to help. I mean, there, there are costs, there's administrative costs, and we have to pay for the property, we have to pay to feed our students. So there's costs involved in that. So there is a tuition fee with the schools. However, bringing people in that God wants to come to those schools and they prayed for every applicant that applied because they wanted to make sure that if God was calling someone to come there and they needed to be there, that they were able to come whether they could pay for it or not. For example, if somebody didn't have the necessary funds to, to pay for the school, that would never be an impediment to have somebody come to the school. It wasn't really at all about making money. It's about making disciples and making sure that people are able to come and fellowship with others and learn and grow as a disciple in Christ. That is something that, uh, that I had never seen in other Bible schools. Um, if you don't have the money to pay it, you just can't go. And this was something that was never an impediment. When somebody couldn't pay for the school, uh, we would figure out ways to make income. It was a regular occasion that a situation would come up maybe where some folks maybe want to um, stay for a few nights and, mm -hmm. and um, just be in the atmosphere, yeah. you know, of, of all the um, on fire believers, you know, that were at the camp and uh, or maybe they, they wanted to, to eat and, and he would come to, you know, the office or the finance team and say, how can we make this work? Can mm -hmm. we make this work? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that was a regular occurrence of him coming, hey, can we make this work? How do, or how just can we like make this make work, this work and then trust that the Lord is going to come on the back and fill end in the gap. and fill in the gap. Yeah. Um, and there was times where there was a little and there was times when there was a mu much. And either way, he was always a blessing and he was always pointing to the Lord. And um, whether the ministry had a lot or a little, it didn't matter because the kingdom of God was being advanced. It's never been about the material thing for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's out there for the camaraderie, for the fellowship. Yeah. He's always present. He's either at the camp, he was teaching, he was uh, serving, he was wanting to play disc golf, he was out doing events. 
And so, you know, I just felt like, I just felt led to share that, um, you know, just from a, from a finance standpoint mm -hmm. and from, you know, just a character and, and who he is on a personal level standpoint, what is he doing with his time? The more I got to know him is just lovable. Yeah. <laughs> really, truly, yeah. like the more you get to know him. And, and it's like the joy, like you can just truly feel the joy of the Lord. So we, yeah. we really miss him and, and we pray for him you know, regularly. And, um, you know, we pray the Lord uh, would deliver him out of the situation soon and, and just bring our friend back to mm -hmm. us. So yeah. thanks for hearing us. Thank you. What I want us to do now, I want to get, take all a gift. A good gift. Gift from our heart. All the money we are going to give to you for those guys. So those money is not going, I'm going to cover the cost here for this place. The money we are going to give to you, not for you, but for you to have something to work with, so you can help those guys. We learned that there are many false rumors around Torben on the internet when it comes to finances, portraying Torben as a millionaire who is all about making money and a life in luxury. But as you have heard in the testimonies, this is very, very far from the truth. If you have listened to some of these negative rumors, we have something for you. We have created a web page where we debunk some of these false claims that are going around on the internet. Below, in the description under this video, you can find a link to this page. Still, questions remain. Why are people spreading all this wrong information? I mean, it's normal when Christian ministers are attacked. But when it comes to Torben, the amount of wrong information about him on the internet is overwhelming. Why is that? And why was Torben attacked so badly in this TV program? Who financed this production? We will talk more about that in the next episode.